whether you're launching on Product Hunt or just sharing that first link on the Bubble forum, when you're launching your Bubble app, you want it to go as smoothly as possible. Here are my five essentials for a smooth Bubble app launch. All things that you should know about and should make sure that you understand before you start getting real users onto your Bubble app. First of all, we're going to start off with DNS and domains. You'll need to purchase a domain and that can be a bit daunting to begin with. So I'd recommend uh, maybe posting a comment or getting in contact or, or looking through the bubble forum just to see what other people have done before. But depending on what you buy, it's going to be anywhere between like $10 up to $20 unless it's a premium domain, which means that someone else already owns it and you're effectively buying it off them. Um, when you've got the domain, you're going to need to update the DNS records and Bubble does provide you with a little bit of a guide here. But effectively, uh, if you're unsure what DNS is, it's well worth just watching a few YouTube videos on the topic. It's basically like a uh, an old fashioned address book that is attached to your domain telling when people arrive, uh, you know, if they arrive at app.yourdomain.com, uh, what should happen? Which server should they go to? Um, also bear in mind that your bubble app can be on your root domain, like example.com or even www.example.com, even though that's technically a subdomain. Um, or you could have it like on an actual subdomain like app.example.com and that can be very popular if you need to have a marketing page uh, for your bubble app uh, and you need to have your marketing site on your, uh, your, your root domain and you'd have your bubble app on a subdomain and that basically means that your hosting is completely separate. You can have your marketing site, you can build that with WordPress, Webflow, Squarespace, um, but your bubble app is of course on the bubble tech stack and that can be on your subdomain. Uh, so that's DNS and domains. Right, privacy rules is my second thing that you should check and you should understand. You cannot under or overstate rather, it is your responsibility <clears throat> to ensure that your user's app data is protected. A misconfigured or poorly understood privacy rule could result in all of your users' email addresses being exposed to anyone uh, to skim off your site, to scrape, uh, and you know that could be a rival of your business and you don't want them to be emailing all of your users let alone depending on what part of the world you're in uh, you, you fail to protect their data I would dare say that that is breaking GDPR to put all of your users email addresses out there publicly so uh, the best thing you can do is test 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 and ensure that uh, you've, if you've got different roles in your app that give different levels of permissions for example like a marketplace with have buyers and sellers make sure that you have run your app so many times and you are checking that data that should be protected is not leaking to users or even to public freely accessible on the web when it shouldn't be. Email and uh, transactional emails. So back into this tab here, when you've added in your domain name, uh, Bubble will open up a section here which is asking for a SendGrid API key. SendGrid is a email service and it's one that Bubble have built in and they've, they've got a, an integration here in the settings tab and uh, that is fairly essential for like the system level emails for example password resets magic uh, magic link logins uh, email confirmation now off the top of my head password resets and magic links can be generated and then sent to a third party uh, transactional email provider more on that in like 30 seconds but uh, the fact is that bubble have engineered uh, most of the send email commands or or kind of this yeah the system emails through using sengrin and i don't think that you can send a email confirmation email at least using bubble's built-in email confirmation you know current users emails confirmed yes no um that has to go through sengrin so even if you intend on using a third party um, transactional email provider uh, it's well worth just having that SendGrid API key added in there um, because otherwise you have a much higher chance of the emails that you send your users ending up in spam and also they're likely to be sent from an identity that is kind of like uh, your app name at bubbleapps.io rather than your actual domain name it just isn't going to look professional as for other emails, transactional emails, we've got a whole heap of videos on them, including using the API connected to connect to the likes of Postmark and more recently Loops.so. We're big fans of both of those services. It's well worth checking them out. And uh, they're ideal solutions for if you're building like a CRM 
uh, and you're wanting to uh, send uh, email campaigns, if you're wanting to send notification emails because you've got some sort of social network going on, uh, yeah, they offer much more customization and much more freedom than you get with SendGrid and the default built-in send email uh, work for action that you get in bubble so check out those videos that's well worth it um that was item three item two database push to live so when you launch your app remember that you've got at least two separate versions of your app you've got uh what is is termed main in here but it's under the subheader development and then you've got your live version and Basically, everything apart from the database is completely isolated. No, wrong way around. The database is completely isolated between the two versions. So you have, let me get that right, your, your development version has its own database and your live version has its own database. Now I'm talking about the content of the database, the structure of it, that's when you make a change to your, your dev version, you push it to live and that pushes your database structure, your option sets, everything in workflows, everything in design tabs, everything in backend workflows, that gets migrated or pushed to live when you, uh, when you deploy, uh, but the contents of the database doesn't. However, I've worked with people where uh, their app is some sort of archive and they've begun building their archive uh, in their dev version and they've got a lot of data there and they want to migrate it to live. Well, that's where you get this option here, copy and restore database. And you can uh, copy development data to live and you can do that either for all types or a particular um, data type. Just remember that that is going to overwrite when it arrives in the live database. Um, so that's database push to live. And then lastly, API workflow endpoints. Uh, so if I was getting data in from a third party service, let's say Stripe, let's say I'd set up a Stripe webhook. Uh, so I could say Stripe, uh, yeah, Stripe webhook. Uh, and then to illustrate my point, I'm just going to change this to detecting data and detect data. Okay. So this is my bubble apps url but it is my version tests endpoint and also it hasn't got my own domain name in there if i add my own domain name in there that's going to replace everything left of my mouse here um, but i'm still going to have version test in there and i'll have version live and i will have it without that version test segment what i'm getting at is that when you've got incoming data coming into your app you need to set up uh, a webhook that inbound data in the third party service lets you yeah uh, lets you stripe in this example so stripe uh, will need to send data from the, your live stripe account to your live bubble app that means removing version test here but in order to test it you'll need a webhook in your stripe test account to send through to your your bubble test version so i'm just pointing out that the different versions of your bubble app have got different endpoint urls and if you don't add in the live version uh, then you might end up getting live data in your test database or it, it not working at all um, Bear in mind that Stripe is a like payment provider apps in particular, they will have a live version, a test version. But if you were, say, using uh, a, an audio transcription service and uh, it sends you a notification when the transcript is complete, uh, then uh, you'll need to make sure that that is being sent to both your, your, well, it's being sent where you want it, whether that is the live or the dev version of the webhook. So, there you have it. That is my like my top five essentials for going live, for pushing your app uh, live with Bubble. If you're learning Bubble, you need to check out our website, planetnoco.com, because we've got hundreds of Bob tutorial videos and tips just like this, uh, which you can only access on our website by being a member. And right now, we have a really exciting opportunity coming up called the Planet Noco Mastery Program. Head to planetnocode.com slash mastery to find out about that unique opportunity. Time is running out. You'll need to apply basically in the next few days uh, to uh, to be, be uh, considered for that program. But it is it's pretty much the, the most all-inclusive package that we can imagine putting together. So that is well worth checking out.